Welcome to College Prep Confidential, empowering your student with the elite tools they need to get accepted to their dream university. Discover test-taking blueprints from Ivy League professionals, financial aid secrets to get more money for school, and mindset tips for a better college future. Now, please welcome your host, Don Sevsik. Welcome to College Prep Confidential, Episode 2. Today's episode is entitled, What Three Letters Will Have College Admissions Officers Eating Out of the Palm of Your Hand? What are the three letters, you ask? What are the three letters which transform your college recruiting experience into colleges lining up at your door? I'll get to that in a moment, but first you must understand the power of the three letters. These three letters work the same in business as they do with college prep. These three letters turn FedEx into a multi-billion dollar force. These three letters transform Domino's Pizza to a nationally recognized name. And these three letters turn the simple candy company into a multi-billion dollar empire. And these three letters will transform you as a college student into a college recruiting magnet. College prep works much like job prep and business. You must stand out from the herd. When I say herd, I mean most people. College prep, like job applications, and job interviews uses the principles of selling. You see, for college prep, two sales happen. Sale number one, you as a student sell yourself to colleges. Parents of college students do some of the selling as well. And sale number two, colleges sell themselves and their culture to you as a student and you as the parent. Now, for this episode, we're going to focus on sale number one, you selling yourself to colleges. And to sell yourself, you need the power of the three letters. Part of you selling yourself to college comes from showing how you are different. How do you stand out in a crowd of college applications? The key is to use a trick for marketing. In marketing, these three letters turn an ordinary business into a superstar. For college prep, these three letters demand attention from schools. In fact, these same three letters help get me a 60% scholarship for baseball. What are the three letters which transform your college prep journey? U-S-P. U-S-P stands for Unique Selling Proposition. In business, they ask, what is it about you and your business that is different? Do you remember the three companies I mentioned at the beginning of the episode? They all use the U-S-P to explode their business. For Domino's Pizza, this was fresh hot pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less. Or FedEx, when it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. Or how about M&M's? Milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. I mentioned my college scholarship earlier. I got money for baseball. Now, it's important to note there were better hitters than me in my college recruiting class. But I got the money because the college scout said, Don, Nobody else in the recruiting class can both catch and pitch. It's a very unique skill. Notice he said unique, the first letter of the USP. And you can use the power of the USP the same way I did, to have colleges eating out of the palm of your hand. The unique selling proposition turns the tables on busy college admissions officers. You see, these college admissions officers get a stack of applications, and the first thing they're looking to do 
is disqualify you. There's simply not enough time in the day to research and review all the applications thoroughly. They have a stack of them. And it works the exact same way with resumes for a job. Recruiters speed through resumes, and what they're doing is they're looking for certain traits or unique features which stand out. They take the standout applications, the same as college admissions advisors do, put it in another pile to spend more time on later. Now, for college prep, take this phrase to heart. Camouflage is a curse. I'm going to say that one more time. Camouflage is a curse. This is why you need a USP. USPs make sure you don't blend in and get ignored in the college application process. In college prep, you as a student or a parent of a student who wants to go to college aren't the only one working on and crafting a USP. Remember at the beginning of the episode when I said how two sales are made? Sale number one is you selling yourself to colleges, right? The second sale also involves a USP. When colleges sell you, they sell you on why, as in why you should attend their school. Colleges use USPs to get you to attend. Like Texas Wesleyan, who has billboards posted up about all over town that say, quote, you in the back is not your name. Now, this is a knock against larger universities where you don't get a personal touch. So Texas Wesleyan is using a unique selling proposition on how their college is smaller, and because of this, you'll get more personal attention. So as you can see, colleges use the USP to try to get you to come there. And you use your own personal USP as a college-bound student or parent of a college-bound student to attract colleges like bees to honey. So the question becomes, what do you need to do to craft your unique selling proposition? So you could turn the question from, why should I review John Doe or Jane Doe's college application to, why shouldn't I review John Doe or Jane Doe's application? This is the first rule of standing out, uniqueness. Uniqueness gets you out of the toss pile for college applications. Uniqueness makes college admissions advisors stop and pay attention to you and what you have to bring to college. And being unique is going to help you in the other tips I'm about to give you. Standout rule number two for college prep, engagement. I'm reminded of Dale Carnegie's quote, in order to be interesting, be interested. Building off episode one, where I said you're the prize, engagement starts with you showing interest in a school, but not desperation. So show interest, but not desperation. And here's a great story to support that theory. Ten minutes before I recorded this episode, I'm reading a U.S. news article about college prep. And inside the article, they're quoting an associate vice president at Miami University of Ohio. And they're talking about how making a trip to campus isn't the only way to let your interest be known. And here's the quote. We count any way students engage with us, which includes opening a college's emails, clicking on a link in a particular message from a college, or participating in a webinar or Facebook Live event, end quote. You see, you have other ways to demonstrate engagement. And it starts with researching the college, their history, the news, current events, and the alumni network, and who is doing what at the college. This type of research always helped me in job interviews get a leg up above the herd, the competition. When I'd repeat back a news event or a historical item about the company to an interviewer and how it relates to their journey, They always remembered me and brought it up as a reason I was hired. Why would they do that? Because I did my homework. I researched the business. You see, these little details matter. 
And like Dale Carnegie recommended, I became interested. And this made me stand out. Here's another unique engagement tactic. Call or write the college. Or engage with them on social media. Taking a step further, ask to interview somebody at the college. Or even ask a question in a forum or social media. Now when I say questions... I'm not talking about selfish questions that most college students ask, such as, how's the meal program? What kind of housing do we get? What's the class schedule? What I'm talking about is deep interest questions about the college and their mission. Here's a few questions I've used in job interviews, which you can take and use for college admissions programs. Now, these questions give you an unfair advantage for getting noticed. Think of it as playing video games with cheat codes. It's ridiculous. Ask any or all of these questions. So here's question one. What's the biggest challenge XYZ University has in the next six months for growth? Now when you ask that question, you're showing interest in the university and their future. Question two. What new developments or initiatives is XYZ University most excited about in the next six months? The phrase excited gets the other person excited because now they're thinking about what things are we working on that can make this college better. And by you asking that question, you're showing an active interest in the college's future, the financial future, the cultural future, and you get people talking. When people talk, they give you intelligence on what colleges are looking for. And how about question three? What's your favorite thing about XYZ University? These three questions demonstrate your interest in the university and their culture. And what's fascinating is most applicants, aka the herd, are not asking these questions. They're not doing the homework. And when you do this, it puts you top of mind at these universities. Admissions officers and college recruits say, wow, Here's somebody who's interested enough to ask about our business plans, to ask about our future. The third question, by the way, what's your favorite thing about XYZ University, caters to vanity. It caters to people's self-interest. Because the most important thing people want to talk about, themselves. So when you ask this question, it gets them talking all the time. After you ask it, sit back, watch their reply, watch watch. When they talk, what are they doing? What emotions do they have? Oh, and I almost forgot the fourth question that I use shamelessly in job interviews, which you could steal and use for college prep. And here it is. If you could design the ideal freshman for the incoming class, how would you design them? What is your ideal applicant? When you ask this question, the college is forced to reveal their values to you. And by asking It shows your deeper level of interest. Remember, interest increases engagement. And engagement, as we saw in the article I quoted from U.S. News, moves you up on the college radar. It takes you out from herd status and puts a giant U on you, which means unique. It's someone they should pay attention to. Asking these questions puts you miles ahead of the herd who are all asking the same three or four selfish questions. Now let's continue with your plan to develop your USP, stand out, and be unique. Optimize your social media presence. Now you're probably sitting there as a parent of a college student or a college student and asking, Don, why? Why should I care about social media for applying to college? Let me share a few statistics with you. First one, according to a Kaplan survey, 35% of college admissions officers have visited an applicant's social media page to learn more about them. They're researching you on social media, and if you don't have a profile or your profile's boring and unentertaining, they're going to pass you over. Here's another one, Kaplan's test preps. 2010 survey of college admission officers revealed four out of five college admission offices use Facebook, Facebook to recruit students. 27% of admissions officers surveyed 
said they Google prospective students. If they Google your name, where are they going to land? Most likely, your social media profiles are near the top of search results. And what does that mean? Do you have these updated? Do you have them optimized to pull college admissions officers in like a magnet? 35% of the surveyed officers said when checking up on a student's online presence, they found something that negatively impacted their chances of getting in. By the way, this is up triple from one year before. What does this tell you? Not only do you need an optimized profile, you need to eliminate negative traits. Are you taking ridiculous pictures? Are you saying ridiculous things? Here's how you can test your profile. Ask yourself, if you were a college, college admissions officer and you landed on your profile, would you recruit you? The answer to this question will determine your future for getting views and getting noticed by colleges on your social media. So in my research that I want to share with you right now, the two biggest profiles to set up, maintain, and optimize for college prep are Facebook and LinkedIn. Now, you're probably saying, why LinkedIn? That's for businesses. That's for older people. Why should I care about LinkedIn? Well, let me tell you. Optimizing and building your LinkedIn profile as a college student puts you miles ahead of the curve. It shows you have a business sense before you have a full-time job and you ever even leave college. It also helps you connect with college admissions officers. Why would you want to do that? Because now you can write blog posts and status updates displaying your knowledge and your uniqueness factor. And guess who sees that when you do that? the same college admissions officers that you connected with, the same college admissions officers that you're attracting to get offers, financial aid, and attention from these schools. Oh, and by the way, LinkedIn is a great place to collect recommendations and connect with high earners and influential business people. Why, as a college student, do you care about connecting with influential business people? Because some of these same people were alumni of the very colleges you're looking to go to. LinkedIn gives you a chance to get crucial endorsements and attention from these alumni. And some of these alumni can provide valuable endorsements and recommendations for you. Oh, and by the way, the more people you connect with who were alumni at the college you want to go to, the more social proof you get yourself. And if you're wondering about social proof, I covered this in episode one. If you've not listened to this, I urge you to go back and get more free tips and tricks to turn yourself and your, your presence into a social proof magnet. You see, social proof comes from recommendations. It comes from connections. And when college admission officers see this, they begin to create a story in their mind about you and your value, and the unique proposition that you bring to a college. So the next question is, how do you stand out on LinkedIn? We're going to start with your profile photo. You see, a good photo reels people in, even if they don't know you or never met you. And, like it or not, people form judgments based on your looks. You don't believe me? How about this? In a series of experiments studying judgment from facial appearances, Princeton psychologists Janine Willis and Alexander Todorov found it only takes 100 milliseconds to form an impression of somebody just by looking at a photo of their face. Oh, you want more proof? How about the photo feeler studies? Photo feeler, if you don't know, is a site you should get familiar with. It's a photo evaluation site, and one I use to optimize my LinkedIn profile and get over 10,000 connections at the time of this recording. Now, in a blog post in 2014, Photo Feeler took 60,000 ratings for 800 photos, and they evaluated each photo for competence, likability, and influential power from none other than staring at the photo. Now check this out. Eye obstructions like sunglasses brought down your likability by 0.36 points. Let me pause here for a moment. Each of these numbers I'm about to give you 
are on a point value on the photo feeler site, either positive or negative. Other eye obstructions, like hair, glare, and shadow, decreased your competence and influence scores by negative 0.29 and negative 0.31, respectively. Let's pause and realize what I just told you. Hair in your face, glare in the photo, or a shadow decreased people's perception of your intelligence and your influence. Now, is that fair? Probably not. But in social media, perception is reality. And so if you cut out these negative traits, you automatically attract more connections, including people at the college. Now, here's some advantages you can take from the photo feeler study. Slight squint, which is also called a squinch. If you had squinching eyes, you got an average gain of 0.33 points for competence, 0.22 points for likability, and 0.37 points for influence simply by squinching your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen listening to this, this is free ways to get more attention from college advisors on social media. It's an unfair advantage when you, when you make little changes like this. What about your jawline or losing weight to accentuate your jawline? The study continues with a shadow line that outlines the jaw all the way around ups your score by 0.24 points for competence, 0.18 points for likability, and 0.18 points for influence. They noted jawline was rated as attractive trait by all the people in the study. The jawline defines your face. Now, just a little tip. You could try facial exercises like chewing gum, which is easy to do and it's fun. When you gum chew, you build and reshape the masseter muscles. These determine your jawline, and your jawline determines extra connections simply based on the photo in your social media profile. This is powerful stuff, my friends. Now, the final point in the photo feeler study, most impactful on scores, and this should come as no surprise to you, but it's worth telling you right now. A smile with teeth visible gets you an average of, ready for this, 0.33 points for competence, 1.35 points for likability, and 0.22 points for influence. Simply by smiling, with your teeth showing, people assume you're more likable, more intelligent, and more influential. Now stop and think about what that does for your social media profile. What do you think a great photo with a great smile and a jawline does for your social media attraction of college interest? I'm not even going to answer that question because you already know the answer. You see, when you come up in a LinkedIn search, people see your photo, they see your headline. And if college admission officers have a stack of people they need to review, and from the statistics I quoted earlier, they're researching you on social media, They'll save time by discarding certain people without ever clicking into their profile, which means you lose the battle to get into college before they ever even click in your profile and learn more about you. So to avoid this, to demand attention without screaming out loud, make sure your profile makes it impossible to ignore. And it all starts with the photo that you put on LinkedIn. While your social media attraction starts with your photo, it continues with your headline. Here's a little test for your LinkedIn and Facebook headline or summary that I want you to ask yourself. Suppose you had to play a game going forward. You had to sum up your unique value to the world in a headline on your LinkedIn or Facebook. Also suppose you couldn't meet anybody or start any more relationships up unless they clicked your social media headline first after reading it. Knowing this, what would you write to make your digital profile irresistible? I talked about social proof in episode one. Now, if you didn't catch the episode, I recommend you go back and listen. Social proof comes from likes, shares, comments, recommendations, and followers. In other words, who is following you? How many people like, comment, or share your posts? 
And finally, how many followers do you have? College admissions officers look at all of this. They want to see what kind of person you are, who you associate with, what you're working on, what your values are, because they're looking for unique, standout individuals to come to their college. By doing so, when they bring people like you in with a unique value proposition, it ups the college's profile for the next recruiting class. By the way, I've noticed something on LinkedIn since we're talking about connections and unique selling proposition, and this is not a random occurrence. The more connections I make, the more connections fall into my lap. The more posts I write, the more people engage with my profile. And the same goes for you in your quest for college prep and after college when you get a job. Action begets action. You see, as you build your network, you magnetically attract more people into your network. This is the power of momentum. And momentum is another trait of people who stand out. They're always moving forward. They're always making gains in life, in social media, and business. The same works for college. And here's how it works. You start with 5 or 10 connections. Pretty soon you move up to 20. And these more connections open up your network to more people, which allows you to connect with even more people. Think of it as a snowball on the top of a hill. As you roll the snowball at the start, it's small. But over time, it gathers snow and gets bigger and bigger until it rolls down the hill by itself in a giant ball of snow. It's momentum. And this is, ex this is exactly how social media connections work. College admission officers, when you do this, are more likely to find you and research you with the social proof you've built up. And social proof moves you up in search engine results. When you move up in search engine results, you stand out at the front of the pack. So I'll cover more social media in depth in future episodes, but for now, these are the basics to build your unique selling proposition on social media. Continuing with ways to be unique and stand out, build a web presence. While social media is your first stop on your website presence, to stand out in the digital world, you have other options. Have you built a website? Have you designed a game? Have you built something online? If so, feature it, highlight it, promote it. Next, stand out with your grades. Here's an important lesson you need to know about colleges, and I covered part of this in episode one. Colleges are a business, and the business comes from getting you, the student, in to pay tuition. But they also use that <coughs> to bring in other students. The better talent they get through the doors, including academics with great grades, the better their engagement and exposure is. Smart people who get good grades, get great jobs out of a college, get used as case studies these case studies bring in the next round of college recruits. You see, people like to brag and promote their alma mater. When you understand this, it shows you the importance of ratcheting up your grades because colleges will use standout students as examples of why to come to their college. So your unique proposition transforms into their unique selling proposition. Isn't it funny how that works? By the way, my company designed a platform with Ivy League testing experts, and we sat these people down in a room. They're the top test takers in the world for ACT and SAT, and they show you how to work smarter, not harder, so you can conquer the ACT and SAT without stress. So if you want to learn more about this, how to get better grades without stressing out, check out the free training at cpcshow.com. That's cpcshow.com. Okay, onward. Next step in standing out and being unique. Stand out with your course choices in high school. What do I mean by this? College admission officers, 
in another article from U.S. News and World Report. Look for people who challenge themselves. Now ask yourself, did you coast through your classes? Did you choose a few advanced courses and not just breeze through? College is the time to level up before you get a full-time career. And it all starts with what you did in high school. Do you challenge yourself and get out of your comfort zone once in a while? Or do you sit back in your box? Colleges look for people who push their limits. It adds to your USP, since most people, a.k.a. the herd, take the easy route. Let's continue on. Here's another way to be unique and stand out. Stand out with your extracurricular activities and your hobbies. Find something unique about you outside of school life. Take it, make sure it's unique, either you enjoy it or you're really good at it or both. Now build your essay, your social media, and your promotional efforts around this unique hobby or skill. Here's an example I want to share with you when we were interviewing a bunch of college interns at my old job. Now, the interns came in and most of them had equal skill sets. Their resumes looked pretty much identical. But one of the applicants, when asked to talk about their passion, told me a fascinating story. He was a student of Wing Chun Kung Fu. But when I asked him to open up about his study of this discipline, it was the details and the story he told me which make him stand out. For instance, he told me that Wing Chun was the first martial art ever invented by a woman. He also told me how it uses an opponent's energy against them. He knew the nickname of Wing Chun was Beautiful Springtime. This guy studied it like art, and it showed and shined through when he spoke. And he even took his hobby and his skill of Wing Chun and turned it into a business lesson and related it to our company. Now, the other candidates talked about boring, safe stuff like sports and the weather. So let me ask you a question. Which applicant do you think stood out in those interviews? The answer is simple. The guy who talked about Wing Chun. Because he was passionate about it, he was good at it, and he took that lesson and related it to how he could help us. I tell you this story because you can use the same technique to stand out and attract colleges to recruit you. This same tactic to build on your unique selling proposition. Here's another way to stand out. Writing essays. Now let me ask you another question. Who do you think stands out more? A person who's a member of a book club or a person who helped write a book? By the way, while we're on the subject of writing, another place to stand out and shine is your essay. Many people have trouble writing. So if you could put together a powerful essay with a great story that highlights your unique selling proposition, your application for colleges jumps out of the stack. And if you need help with essay writing or other college prep items, I put together a free training at cpcshow.com, at cpcshow.com, and it helps you build your unique selling proposition. So there you have it. If you learn nothing else today, learn this. Embrace the power of the USP in your personality, your skill set, your digital presence, and your hobbies. USPs will raise your status to prospective colleges and have them chasing you and eating out of the palm of your hand. So that is it for today's show. And if you want to take advantage of the free training to help you level up to get into college, it's cpcshow.com. That's cpcshow.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next episode. That's all for this episode of College Prep Confidential. To discover how to give your student a better future by increasing financial aid, improving test scores, and reducing stress, visit our website at cpcshow.com. That's cpcshow.com.